Well, hello there. This is Shane from Shane's Reviews, and I hope you're having a great day today. If I seem a little disheveled, my apologies. It is decided that after 8 o'clock this morning, there will be snow, and quite apparently, a bunch of it. So, anyway, we'll see what happens with the day. I hope that everybody in my local area, considering everything that we've been through since December, uh, keeps their minds about themselves and stays safe. We're going to be talking about Marco Close, and it is Citadel, which is the third book in the Palladium Wars series. And this has been a series that I've really, I've not really had my heart warmed to, but I find myself reading them again and again. It might be a curiosity point, but there's one thing about Marco Close that I really enjoy. One, he's not afraid of his heritage. He's not afraid of where he's from. He's not afraid of showing what it would have been like to be on the wrong side of a war. And these are his own words. I'm not trying to put anything anywhere. Granted, the whole thing with World War One and World War Two, yeah, right? But the way that he goes about bringing that around is showing that not everybody was a evil individual in this and that some of them were just doing what they thought was right and i'm not excusing anybody's actions especially war criminals but i like his point of view in this because what if you were in your own country and all of a sudden everything was really bad you know your your money wasn't worth anything and there really wasn't any plans and then there's this one person that says, hey, follow me and I'll show you the world. But then they go off on the kooky side of things, right? And so you lose, your country loses, and now there's the aftermath of all that. Well, this book series has got a lot of that to it. So that's brave on his part, but also I like it quite a bit because it's through reading, it's through even these fictional stories, science fiction, you know, uh, or even fantasy, that we get these different viewpoints that we normally wouldn't have for ourselves. So I applaud him on this. Uh, the gentleman that narrated this, okay, so it was Corey Jackson was the individual that did the narrations for this. And don't, don't get me wrong, Corey Jackson is good, but he's no Scott Brick. And if anybody has heard the voice of Honey, you'll understand what I mean by that. But the things that Corey brings to this series is fairly incredible. He doesn't really have a strong change of character voice. Like he, he, he'd be suited perfectly for like one or two or three characters, but whenever it gets to the point where you've got six or seven characters, his characters bleed into each other because he doesn't have enough change of inflection or rhythm yet. But I've got faith. I believe he will over the course of time because just from the beginning of the series till now, he's actually improved on his narrations and what he does. So kudos, Corey. Thank you. Now, let's ask a very important question. Did this book elicit any kind of emotional response from me whatsoever? I've already established kind of not a fan, but for some reason I keep reading. It goes back to something that a author, I'd, I'd like to call him a friend, he's not, but it's one of those things we have had conversations back and forth and one of the things he said to me was not every book is for every person not every person that follows an author or loves an author is going to love every work that they do and that's that's true with this i was afraid at first whenever the first one of these in this series came out that it was just going to be a rewash of a another series that he had and thankfully that's kind of not true it kind of felt like that at first but there's these subtle differences in between the characters. There's these subtle motivations and sometimes not so subtle on the motivations of what these characters are trying to achieve. And we're kind of following two different groups. One group is on the winning side of the war efforts and they are a military group. And then there's this other group, which is more like a, a firefly kind of scenario where you've got this one person that's a, a cook and this one person that's pretty well just diplomat one person that does you know this that and the other so they all have a very important role without one of them it's kind of hard for them to get their jobs done with that being what it is at first i was thinking that this was really lackluster 
it could be that it's just a whole lot of exposition and background to build up to get to know the characters for what's to come. Which, if that's the case, we are in for a ride. If that's not the case, if this was just kind of like a a, a goof, a gaff, a, a somewhat fun thing for the author to write for themselves, I still applaud it because it shows that there's a emotional depth that is getting into his writings now that really wasn't there at the beginning. And it also could be the translations or him learning to speak a second language better. I'm not sure what, but the way that things have come along in this book series, it's actually really good. Again, not my cup of tea, but really good. Uh, and it's, I think part of it has to do with, it's just, they're in a place, they're in a time where things are just not happening. Companies and people and worlds are trying to recover from a war. Them as a whole are having to figure out ways to move past what they've done before and get a different outcome instead of the same outcome. That's what this whole series for the Palladium Wars really kind of comes down to is are the people in the stories emotionally intelligent enough to be able to pull off what they think they can't. I'm hoping that this just wasn't the end here. If it was, it's a good ending to the story. So basically, did it get an emotional response? That was the question I asked before I went on that long thing. Ooh, there we go. Uh, it kind of did. And the reason why is because the author was not afraid to sacrifice a, a character and in doing so, actually enriched the story so much more. Now granted, this happened towards the end, but you'll know why I said that here in a minute. I just, I suspect that there's there's a, there's more stuff about him that we need to know that we just don't know yet. And it, it's kind of hard, mm -hmm. H2O, and it's kind of hard to know where the story's gonna go without that information. So it's either gonna be something that will forever be in the mind of the author and nobody will ever find out, or if the series continues, then hopefully there's some things that I, I would be curious to see if they happen or not. Uh, I would just like some more clarification, please. Marco Close. Is it Close or Clue? Marco Close. So, to Marco, I would really like to know if, you know, wh where we're going with this. <laughs> um, and, and it's not like I have a right to demand anything from the man. Uh, I'm sure that his plate is just as full as everybody else's is right now, the way the world is. I'm just very appreciative that he's continued to write, uh, which is incredible. And he does a good job with it, too. I mean, it... It has to say something that I continue to say that this series is not for me. But I continue to read it. He's kept me invested. He's kept me emotionally attached to it. And I don't think that I've yet answered that question, but we're getting there. So the whole thing that really got my emotional and got my emotional intelligence engaged is that there was something that happened in the previous book where these people contacted the Firefly type ship and was like, hey, um, we want you to deliver this nuke to our buddies over here. And they get it, they find out it actually is a nuke, and then they turn it into the appropriate authority. So good for them for, in their own words, making a bad choice, but then making a good choice. But that had fallout in this book, and that was one of the more unique things to me. Now granted, this book did have typical sci-fi type stuff in it. We had ships, we have war, we have a new type of ship, which was incredibly exciting. And not only do we have a new type of a ship, the way that it functions compared to traditional warships in this universe that he's creating is phenomenally hands down the new way to do stuff. Uh, instead of it being, you know, bigger and better and bigger and better and bigger and better, they decided to go the other way, make it intelligent as all get out make it very small, make it very fast. And so that's kind of one of the neat things in this story that I'm just glancing over completely. I don't want to give all the details because sometimes the discovery is what is the most incredible. You'll have to forgive me. I just, that has to go. I can't, I can't, I just can't do it. <laughs> I can't let it sit there. There is fallout for the Firefly type crew. And then we find out something about one of the crewmates, which was actually kind of cool. Let's, Stop right there before I give away everything about the book because I don't want to do that. I want you to be able to read it and enjoy it. I'm, I'm excited about the next book now. 
Whereas with the first one, I was like, eh, are you riding coattails, buddy? The second one, I was like, okay, well, the characters, they're, they're getting their own. And, oh, there's actually a fairly decent little plot line here. Because the first one, it's hard to say, but I really don't remember there being a major plot line in the first book, with the exception of the characters going from point A to point B. That's a story in itself, granted, but it kind of really strayed from the way that Marcos had been writing in another series, where everything was so grandiose. So I'm hoping that maybe, just maybe, he's going to continue down this path of a more enlightened, intelligent way of writing the books. And I'm sorry if that upsets some, because it's not meant to upset anybody. But it's one of those things of, it would be really cool to see him get into that and that endeavor and and really take that with this because that's the thing i can't remember in like pulp books that i've read here recently in sci-fi and fiction granted some of the bb larson books uh whenever it came to like the swarm etc about 10 15 years ago maybe but anyway the long of it all is is this book worth your time, efforts, and energies? I do believe it would be. If you've never read any of Marco's books before, do yourself a favor and read it this series from the beginning. There's only three. Do yourself a favor though on this one and start at book one because there's a lot of things that you'll be able to get through inference, sure. Just do yourself a favor and get the backstories and the current stories and all that kind of stuff so that you don't end up in the middle going, huh, was this this or was this this? Because I would love to have everybody come together and us talk about it maybe in a month or so if I see enough comments in this video I will make a special video which will be a follow-up to this one and we'll see where it goes from there anyway if you've made it this far thank you so much for watching Lynette I got your message I just wanted to say a very special thank you to you and you know why and you're awesome and no worries uh, we'll know you, that you'll be here and we'll be here and that's that's the biggest thing that could be Lynette we love you thank you so much and I don't know which one of the videos that's coming in from over here you guys will check out. But if you happen to check out this one, then I will see you in the next video. Video killed the radio star.